have we been punked? I mean, that's the only way I can make any sense out of this. Like, this has to be just some kind of elaborate prank, because there's no way anybody involved with this possibly could have thought that they were making a movie that people would actually enjoy. There's just... No, this... Th this has to be a prank. It has to be. Uh... But anyway, Cats. This movie. Why is this movie? J that's it. Just why is this movie? J just, just why? Who was asking for this? I wasn't, I can tell you that. Anyway, Cats was directed by Tom Hooper. And it stars Francesca Hayward and Idris Elba and Judy Dench and some other people you'd probably recognize. And this is about the time where I would summarize the plot, but uh, what plot? Really, there's, there's almost no plot to speak of. I mean, it starts with this cat person thing named Victoria who has been dumped on the side of the road by some humans, presumably because she is an unholy abomination and must be destroyed. And she meets several other unholy abominations that must be destroyed that are known as the Jellicle Cats. And they are gathering for their annual Jellicle Ball where one lucky cat person thing will be chosen to go to the heavy side layer, whatever the hell that is. Basically, it means they get to ride in a hot air balloon and drift off into the sky until they fade away and become a star child or some shit, I don't know. There's this evil cat called McCavity, who's played by Idris Elba, and he's also a wizard, I guess, because he can teleport and he can make other cats teleport. Which makes me wonder why he didn't just teleport himself into that goddamn balloon. I don't know. And there's a bunch of other cats with silly, nonsensical names like... Bustopher Jones and Jenny Annie Dots and the Rum Tum Tugger and Mungo Terry and Rumple Teaser and Rumple Stiltskin and Horseradish and whatever the hell. And they proceed to sing and dance a lot and some of them wear clothes and some don't, and one wears clothing that is apparently just an extra set of skin on top of existing clothes, which is weird. One of the cats wears a fur coat, which is kind of like a human wearing a skin coat, isn't it? I mean, that's weird, right? It's not just me. And one of them tap dances, because why not? And then there's a point where the cat version of Taylor Swift descends from the ceiling on a moon and starts sprinkling catnip on everyone. And that was about the point where I started checking my drink to make sure it wasn't spiked, because clearly this could not have been real. This had to be some kind of fever dream or shared hallucination or something. So obviously this movie is really fucking weird, but uh, it's not just weird, it's also bad. And those two do not necessarily go hand in hand. You can be weird and still be good, but cats... No, it's not. Now, I have not seen the stage version of this musical, so perhaps someone out there can fill me in. Was that also, like, 80% exposition? Because it seems like almost everything that happens in this movie is just cats showing up and introducing themselves through song. And I'm just sitting in that godforsaken theater, staring at that godforsaken screen in front of me, and wondering, is something ever actually going to happen? But then again, considering how weird this is, do I want something to happen? Because I'm a little afraid of what that something might be. The visual effects are not just a little disturbing because of the uncanny valley effect and that you have all of these naked cat people running around and rubbing up against each other. The furries are going to love this one, but... They're not even done well. Like, 
have you ever seen a really bad attempt at photoshopping one person's head onto another person's body? Well, imagine two hours of that. And it's not just the faces, the clothing, the jewelry. It just, it doesn't move right with the rest of their bodies. It's just really, really badly done. And somehow I missed the moment where Judy Dench's real hand showed up for a second. I assume I was just completely zoned out at that point and just glossed over it. But someone out there on Twitter caught it. And yeah, but even without that mistake, just the stuff that they appear to have done on purpose looks awful. And I almost wonder if it would have been better to just do a full-fledged computer animated movie instead of trying to do this mocap stuff with pasting people's faces onto cat bodies. And what really makes this bizarre is this is apparently not the final version of the film. Like, they're actually releasing an updated version. In fact, it may already be in theaters by the time you watch this. That is, I guess, going to fix some of the visuals, or at least that's what they're claiming. So essentially, movies are at a point where they can get patched now while they're still in theaters. It used to be if you wanted to fix a mistake with the visuals, you had to wait for the DVD, but now I guess they can just do it on the fly. Now, unless they can patch in a plot, I don't think it's going to make that much of a difference, especially judging by the opening weekend figures for this movie, which were not good, but... I mean, at least they're trying, so if anyone does go out and see this movie, let me know if it does actually look better. I don't have high hopes, but we'll see. Now, I will say this much for the movie. It does have a lot of very talented singers and dancers. It also has Judy Dench and Ian McKellen. Well, okay, that's... I shouldn't be too hard on Judy Dench. She is actually doing a decent job of singing. It's just that, you know, her voice isn't as strong as it used to be. Old age, passage of time, it happens to the best of us. Ian McKellen. Oh. No, he was bad. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. He, I like Ian McKellen. He's one of my favorite actors, but God, he cannot sing. But the rest of the cast is doing a very good job with the singing and the dancing. It's just a shame that almost all of the songs are kind of crap. They mostly have this weird-ass rhyming scheme and very little semblance of melody, and they're largely just forgettable, including the new song that they wrote just for the movie. The one exception to this is Jennifer Hudson singing Memory, which was just amazing. I mean, credit where it's due, she killed it. Absolutely killed it. It's probably the only redeeming quality this movie has. So, in the end... I can honestly say this movie met my expectations. I went in expecting a spectacular train wreck and I got it. I wouldn't necessarily say I regret seeing it, if only because I feel like I'm doing a public service by seeing it so you don't have to. And indeed, you do not have to. You don't have to see this movie. I know some of you want to, if only out of morbid curiosity. I can't stop you. But I am telling you right now, you have been warned. You don't want to see this movie, unless for some reason you just think life makes absolutely too much sense, in which case this movie will fix that. Now, if any of you fail to heed my warning and you do see it in the coming weeks, let me know if the visuals are any better, because I am kind of curious. Not curious enough to go see it again, mind you. Maybe I'll see it on Blu-ray when it comes out there, but... No, I'm not going back in a theater to see this. No. No. God, no. Why would I? No. And that's all I have to say about cats. Until next time, take care.